Assalamualaikum and a very good day every to everyone. My name is Muhammad Ishra Shazwan, Web Rani, and today I will be presenting a topic which is full waveform inversion, which also known as FWI. Okay, now let's go to the first agenda for today. Okay, now moving on to the first agenda where the presentation outline. Now, the first outline we have the introduction and study background, where for this part I will briefly explain to you what is FWI. Next, we have the problem statement for today's uh, research. Next, we have the case study analysis where we have two case study, which is first is a salt misinterpretation in Kifley Canyon in the central Gulf of Mexico. Second case study is a cycle skipping due to presence of carbonate in Gara Basin offshore Fortaleza, Brazil. Uh, the next outline we have the conclusion and recommendation, and last but not least is the references that is used throughout my presentation for today. Now, full wave inversion is also known as FWI is a high resolution imaging methodology which integrates the entire seismic trace. This is to extract the physical parameters of the medium sample by seismic wave. Now, if you can see here at the left side, we have two figures which is uh, the before. Uh, before full wave immersion and after full wave immersion. Now this I will be explaining more on my presentation. Now moving on to the study background, full wave immersion is an important technique to produce velocity model for seismic imaging. Several successful attempts using FWI to identify shallow sediments, mud volcanoes, and also gas pocket. However, there are several fundamental barriers that is restricting FWI, which is the lack of consistency in strategy that is practical for non analytical data types, geological setting, the description, computational condition, especially for large apertures, and last but not least, is the high frequencies. Now, this restriction can lead to misinterpretation of higher geological content contrast areas such as the carbonate, salt dome, and volcanic rocks, which can lead to cycle skipping. The okay, recent development of FWI has managed to minimize the cycle skipping and amplitude discrepancy problem. Now, going on to the problem statement for, our, uh, for today. Now, the lack of consistency in the FWI methodology for different data types and high contrast methodology can lead to inaccurate seismic image and thus lead to cycle skipping. Uh, interpretation with poor model will lead to uncertainty and thus hamper the evaluation of potential prospect. Uh, in order to overcome this problem, few fundamental questions have been identified which is first, the, uh, how to determine which method suits the subsurface condition and second is how to reduce the effect uh, due to high contrast cryptology. Moving on to our first case study, which is salt mist interpretation in Kefli Canyon in the central Gulf of Mexico. Okay, cycle skipping identities on salt bodies. One of the main ideas in generating subsoil imaging is by producing a reliable salt velocity model. Now, the current procedure to generate salt model is by integrating tomography and sometimes merge with shallow diving, diving full wave immersion, as this step is to first produce the best sediment velocity model. Next, the sediment flood migration will be used to interpret the top of salt and followed by salt flood migration which is to identify base of salt. Okay. The next procedure is to generate several salt scenarios which is to require which is required to resolve the salt geometry. Now this procedure is time consuming and prone to human error. As mentioned previously, main concern is in FWI is when there is a presence of sharp contrast as this will cause amplitude dis discrepancy and cycle skipping. In order to tackle this problem, travel time cost with frequency dependent time window which is proposed by Low and Schuster will be integrated into the FWI workflow. Now, the theory of travel time cost function. Now, the key to a travel time based uh, full wave immersion cost function is the measurement of the travel time between the recorded data and model synthetic data. Now, the travel time difference is often obtained by maximizing the cross correlation of synthetic and recorded data in a time window. Challenges for travel time measurement is to determine the optimal window size. In certain cases, short time window is required to capture the non-stationary variation of travel time for different events. On the other hand, a longer time window is required when there is presence of strong noise in the input data. Another challenge is the measurement can be inaccurate due to strong noise, 
In order to reduce the uh, error in seismic image, the authors implant a uh, cross correlation cross correlation coefficient between the recorded data shifted by the travel time measurement and synthetic data as a way to encourage more reliable measurement to the drive inversion. Okay, now as you can see here, there are several figures. For figure one, uh, it's inline section depth sliced at three kilometers with velocity of overlaid on RTM stack. For figure one A and one C. Uh, it's an initial model and 1B and 1D is straight output model uh, from FWI okay. for figure 1B and 1D is the uh, results from the FWI but for figure 2 we have the inline section of RTM stack for AC which is the initial model and BD straight output model from FWI at shallow deep depth okay let's observe the figure one by one you can see uh, from figure 1B and also 1D the sort geometry can clearly be uh, can clearly be observed compared to one D oh sorry compared to one A and also one C where the sort geometry uh, is much more clearer uh, much more clearer in B and also D after we have applied the new uh, after we have applied the FWI methodology while for figure two we have the sort uh, the sort, sort body where the geometry you can see even clearer image of the sort body on figure uh, B compared to figure 2A. Okay, now this is the continuation of the, uh, of the discussion based on the figure 1, uh, figure 1 and so figure 2. So for figure 1A and 1B, it shows the inline section with velocity overlaid on the reverse time migration RPM, stack image for the initial model and FWI updated model respectively. Very small changes in shear low sediment for the new FWI. There are changes around the top of salt, especially at the salt finger and the salt geometry is slightly reshaped, more noticeable towards the salt geometry on the depth slice at 3 km where we can observe from figure 1C and also 1D. The authors expect sharper salt boundaries as the FWI frequency increases. Figure 2 shows the RTM stack image comparison between initial model 2A and the FWI updated model 2B. So these two figures display the contrast in shallow window from 2 to 5 kilometers. Stock finger is poorly imaged for 2A whereas 2B clearly display the overhang boundary where you can observe from the yellow dash line. So for figure 2 and C display the contrast in deep window from 6 to 10 km. The image uplift after FW is obvious at a depth as deep as 10 km. Uh, it can also be seen from the circle in figure 2D. Okay. Let's move on to our second case study, which is cycle skipping due to presence of carbon in Kerala Basin offshore Fortaleza, Brazil. The okay, presence of carbon in platform. Now, cycle skipping may arise when the initial model causes the wave model to be incompatible by more than half of the time of the recorded data. Okay, this will create a misinterpretation of velocity model thus increase the uncertainty to the image. To overcome this problem, a combination of selected data in offset and frequency in areas with high geological contrast settings such as carbonate, uh, minor locational errors in the reflector position will lead to huge kinematic error. Therefore, the authors implement uh, Western Time Distance W2 norm to measure the data misfit with a robust implementation of the velocity model. Okay, now let's uh, discuss a bit about the theory of the Western Time Distance. You know, the typical least square objective function is applied to measure the data misfit in FWI. The W2 norm is used to estimate data difference. Okay, we can see here this is the equation used. Uh, for for this uh, for this theory, where u and d is represent model and field data in collaboration respectively. To generate long wavelength updates, the author integrates the velocity gradient to the w w2 misfit function. Now the velocity gradient is a weighted velocity sensitivity kernel resulting from d impedance impedance sorry, impedance and velocity parameter parameterization of the objective function. Now, this is to separate the migration isochrons produced by specular reflectivity due to transmitted arrivals. Okay, now, what can we observe from figure 3 is that it shows the sensitivity kernels for different combination of 
the L2 norm, least square method, W2 norm, and the FWI gradients. So as velocity increase with that, and by observing the W2 velocity kernel, it generates longer wavelength compared to L2 norm velocity kernels. As you can see from the figure, figure, three, uh, figure 3 C and D, it shows a longer wavelength compared to figure 3 A and figure 3 B. Okay now, the authors applied their version of FWI in Kerala Basin, offshore Fortaleza, Brazil. The signal to noise ratio was 2.5 Hz, maximum frequency applied in the inversion was 8 Hz. The inversion data window contained a mixture of transmitted and reflected data. Okay, so let's have a look at both figures. Now, for figure 4A and figure 5A, these two are the initial or the starting model. So, you can see from these two figures, it means the carbonate platform. So, uh, in another angle that we can look is that the previous or the old method of FWI, they some, uh, this method sometimes miss uh, high reflectivity areas such as uh, carbonates, uh, salt domes, uh, volcanic mats. So when they miss this uh, high reflectivity area, this causes the cycle skipping. When it causes cycle skipping, it leads to misinterpretation. So that's why if you can look, if we look back at the two case study where they apply an additional to the FWI, so this is how they fix the uh, fix this misinterpretation uh, of the salt and also carbonate uh, carbonate platform. So you can look here in 4D, we can see there's uh, it detects the 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 carbonate uh, the carbonate platform. Okay now. Okay, so as I mentioned, it's now for figure 4A and also figure 5A. Both of these two figures, it meets the carbonate near the seafloor and thus it leads to uh, uncertainty in the seismic image. Okay, because of shallow water and multiple contamination, the reflection tomography update near surface was limited. The high contrast carbonate figure 4 limited refracted to 1.2 km depth. Okay, moving on to the next figure for B, the inversion gave an update but in the wrong direction where you can observe from the red circle in figure 4B. You can play back the video uh, uh, just now. Okay, so for figure 4C, it yields an increase in velocity where the carbon is expected to be. Last but not least, in figure 4D, it managed to resolve the high carbonate contrast. So if you can look back from figure 4 and figure 5, where uh, figure 4D and also 5, 5B, where both of these two managed to update the carbonate platform. So it shows that by integrating the W2 norm with the FWI, it, uh, it managed to produce a better result, thus it leads to a uh, better interpretation. Okay. It seems we have reached to the final part of my presentation. Okay, so in conclusion, to solve the fundamental barriers, a few adjustments towards full waveform inversion is needed. For instance, when encounter a salt body in the Gulf of Mexico, Jean and colleagues, they presented a workflow that uses frequency-dependent time window, travel time cost function, and cross-correlation coefficient based weight function to stimulate travel time measurement with high quality. While Ramos and colleagues, they promote the idea of combining velocity gradient and the optimal transport norm W2. So these two work were proven that they are able to solve cycle skipping problem and thus increase the data image quality. So in my opinion, if we only rely on the previous FWI methodology, okay, the old uh, the old FWI methodology can sometimes miss uh, miss this uh, high high reflectivity area and thus it leads to cycle skipping. So in order to solve the problem, okay, FWI needs to be integrated with other methodology as per mentioned by. Uh, as we mentioned from this two case study, where it improved the data quality and thus it gives a better interpretation of the subsurface uh, of the uh, of the subsurface um, or subsurface features. So I hope from my presentation for today, you get the gist of what is full waveform innovation and what are the advantages and also disadvantages uh, of using FWI. So these are the uh, reference reference list that I use uh, for my presentation. You can check it on later uh, to have a better understanding of what is FWI. So that is all from me. Thank you for your time and see you soon.